Well, I'm back, guys. Uh, this will be Transformers 101 Part 2. We'll continue on where we were left off. Uh, the last time we talked about Ideal Transformer with no loss. We'll continue with Ideal Transformers. Now we're going to look at impedance calculations. And uh, these will become something that you'll find rather important and interesting when you're trying to say take a replacement transformer and put in say an audio output transformer or interstage transformer or any number of uh, different types of transformers. <coughs> Here we're going to talk uh, a little bit about reflected load impedance or what is known as that. It's where you have a transformer, you have a load on it, it actually will reflect back that load, that impedance, through the transformer back to the input. So if you had a tube here and it was looking for a certain load for it, uh, this load could be reflected back through the turns back to that and, and be a load for the tube and, and if the transformer is the right size, right number of turns, on both the second primary and secondary then it would be correct so basically we just got a basic transformer here just single winding for input and output or primary and secondary R1 is going to be what we're going to show how to figure we have a certain voltage on the primary we'll call that E1 N1 is the number of turns of the primary, N2 is the number of turns of the secondary, E2 is the output voltage, and R2 is our load. So to figure this up, R1 equals the quantity, the ratio, turns ratio, N1 to N2, N1 divided by N2, we take that square it times R2. Excuse me. If you want to figure it from the voltages, you can, since the ratio of E1 to E2 is the same as the ratio of N1 to N2, as you remember from the last video. So we take that ratio and square it times R2 and give us R1. This is called the reflected load impedance. Now we'll look at another style transformer and do an example of it. And we'll have a transformer here. And this time, the primary, we're going to center tap. CT for center tap. Our total, we'll figure out, of reflection, R1. We'll have N1 divided by 2 here, N1 divided by 2 here, because the center tap is split in the two. We have E1 and E1, both divided by 2, but R1 will be divided by 4, and there's a reason for that. Go to our secondary. And we'll have our load. Which we'll call R2. And N2 for our secondary winding. And E2 for our secondary voltage. 
And that's what we got here. Now it's going to have basically the same calculation again from last time the ratio of E1 to E2 always equals the ratio of N1 to N2 that gives us R1 equals N1 over N2 our ratio squared times R2 or that can also equal E1 over E2 or the ratio of those two voltages again E is voltage e, electromotive force squared times R2 now let's look at let's plug some numbers in here and get a general idea of what's going on do a little example we'll take R2 is equaling 500 ohms All right. our ratio N1 into squared will be I'll write that out here this little ratio here squared will equal 10 to 1 So from this formula, R1 will then equal this 10 to 1 times R2, resistance or impedance, 500 ohms. That actually is just 10 times 500. ohms which equals 5,000 ohms so in other words if I didn't use the center tap and I was looking at the total amount I had a 500 ohm load here it would back it would reflect back to R1 and if, it, if this ratio between N1 and N2 squared came out to be 10 to 1 then the reflection back would be 5,000 ohms and that's basically how that's what's going on with an audio transformer well as far as that goes any transformer in a radio but in an audio transformer we concern ourselves with impedance because impedance this impedance here is very important because our output tube wants to see a certain load impedance to operate properly and you can find that in your tube manual and in the tube manual it'll tell you what kind of load that it wants on audio output tubes it'll say like either 5,000, 10,000 ohms or or something of this matter your transformer, your output transformer on the secondary side is going to be sized out so it matches up to a standard speaker and most of those speakers are around 4 ohms in the United States now overseas they can be different they can uh, be 2, 2.5 ohms or, or some other value but back in the day over here in the US most of them were set around 4 ohms and that 4 ohms is what's going to be going through the turns ratio and squaring it will reflect back and give us that load that we need for that output tube if our turns are correct now you may have a center tap here and in that case that would be like for a push-pull tube you'd have a plate hooked here and a plate hooked here and this would hook to B plus in that case then it works out to R1 over 4 and R1 over 4 here so then this value would be a little bit different it would be divided by 4 
on these two legs going to each one of the tubes. Ah, uh, see, there was something else I wanted to say about this. I just drew a blank. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I might think of it in a little bit. We've got a few more things to go through. Oh, the <coughs> basis of R1 over 4 works out that because of the squaring. See, we're basically splitting R1 in half here, but we square that. You know, because we're squaring N1 over 2, N1 over 2. When I put that in here and I square it, I get 4. So that's why I got R1 over 4. That's the whole, only reason is because we square that ratio. So that's why that comes out to R1 over 4 instead of like R1 over 2. So let's look at something a little different. Here we've got a transformer where the primary is split. Let's see what we do with the secondary split. And how we figure some things on that. And we'll probably do an example. Uh, of a simple example. I'll just show one right off the bat and then we'll do a new, I'll show a different one and do an example of it. But you could have a transformer say like this, that primary and then you got a secondary coming out here And we'll label these off. Um, this. We're seeing R1. We have E1. And N1. Now we got a transformer as a primary and a secondary. It's got three taps on it. So we have five different connections. Just to pick off some of the stuff, you can have like R1 equals, oh, say N1 over NAB squared and the R load would be over at R A B. So in other words <coughs> hold on a second. I'm back. <coughs> anyway, if I just put a or I want to just look at the reflected load say between A and B then I would use this because the only thing I'm concerned about is this winding in relation to this winding and the reflection of this load back to here. You can do this and just write up your equation for any one of these. It can go A to E, it can be B to D or C to D or E to D or any, any combination. It'll just be different letters down here. And that's how that basically works. So you just whatever windings you're using and whatever load you got on there then that number of windings reflected back to and relate uh, in the ratio to N1 will be your R1 just like this. Now we'll try to uh, get through a quickie here.
I think I'm going to probably stop the video here for right now. Um, the next one is going to take quite a bit of time. And this will just be kind of a short video for right now. Our next video will deal with uh, multiple loads and we'll look at uh, how that is reflected back and we'll look at it from a standpoint also of looking at wattage and using it in our calculations so this will be kind of a shorty and on the next video we'll go over um, that other part and at that point we'll probably also introduce then a regular transformer and look at how we look at instead of an ideal transformer a real life transformer and doing the calculations on it so until next time thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video